Welcome back to the Bradman Word, and we are looking at a little bit of a chink in Abram's armor. Uh, it's not huge, but it is, well, <laughs> it, it is kind of big, but, but we'll see that as we go along. So if you want to turn back to Genesis chapter 12, we're going to finish that chapter off today um, in verses 10 through 20. And last time we looked at Abram on the behest of a God that he is just kind of meeting, he takes off and with everything that he has and all the family that he has and uh, leaves. Now he leaves part of his family uh, in his native country, but, but he leaves and don't know where he's going. He just knows that the Lord said for him to go. And so he goes, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, but now something's happened and he's going off into Egypt. And let's see, um, let's see what that is. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. So stop right there, first off. So it this is, if you know, if you've delved into scripture before, the journey into Egypt should make you go, well, wait a second. <laughs> this has been kind of a... A rough spot when it comes to scripture and really just leaving the land that God is is telling you to go to and going somewhere else even in the midst of famine I mean you have you have uh, Jacob leaving um, the promise leaving Canaan the promised land to go to Egypt because of the famine now Granted, God is overlooking that, and he blesses Joseph, and he blesses the people of Israel, and they grow, but they eventually become uh, slaves in Egypt, and they live there for hundreds of years, um, and to the point where they have to have the whole entire book of Exodus happen to get them out of Egypt. Uh, but not only that, but then you have Ruth, who leaves not for Egypt, but for Moab because of a because of a famine, and she leaves Israel to do that. And in so doing that, she loses her husband and loses her brothers, not necessarily because of that, but that's what happens while she's there in Moab. Um, and so now we see Abram leaving, uh, and what's interesting is the first part of chapter 12, Abram leaves because the Lord says. Here, we don't really see the Lord saying to go down to Egypt. Now, I think the verb sojourn there, at the uh, right in the middle of this verse 10, I, I think that is interesting. Uh, it's a temporary stay. Uh, basically, that's what sojourn means. Um, so it, it's not like, it's not like Abram is planning on living in Egypt uh, permanently, uh, but it is interesting that there is no, there is no call from the Lord to live in Egypt. Really, the only time that that happens um, is the Lord accepts the um, he he. Uh, well, allows maybe is the right word, but Jacob lives in Egypt. He's okay with that for a time. But then the other one is when Jesus is being, um, is being sought after by Herod in the, in the gospels. And he has to flee to Egypt, um, for a time. Uh, and the Lord actually says to go there. So I think that's interesting, um, to say the least, so, but yeah, there's this severe famine in land. So Abram, without the Lord saying to do this, just goes and goes into Egypt. But upon arriving there, he has this interesting, <laughs> interesting proposal for his wife, Sarai. Verse 11, when he was bound to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, I know that you are a woman, beautiful in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you are my sister, that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared for your sake. So first off, obviously you must be thinking to yourself, you just, wait, you want to say that your wife is your sister? Rose? <laughs> 
obviously that kind of comes up into it kind of comes up in your mind right like uh, that's a weird weird thing to uh to point her out as <laughs> abram that's a really odd thing to say um but obviously the big thing here is one abram is basically telling sarai to lie first off i mean just straight up that's what he's he's doing but it's also interesting that he comes up with this idea that if they don't then abram will be killed because of his wife's beauty and yet we don't really see any validation of that um I mean, look what happens upon them arriving in Egypt in verse 14. Uh, when Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. Um, which, uh, that is what Abram points out. So, so far, true. And when, the prince, and when the princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. So, okay, he was taken into Pharaoh's house, but there was never this thing threat and it never felt like they were going to basically kidnap sarai and kill abram because uh sarai is abram's wife but because he says to them oh she's my sister then they're like oh okay then we'll then we'll uh, offer her a place to stay in pharaoh's house and actually abram gets to stay there too and abram gets a lot of blessings from doing this basically lie in verse 16 and for her sake he dealt with and for her sake pharaoh dealt well with abram and he had sheep oxen male donkeys male servants male female servants female donkeys and camels uh, the one thing that i i got to point out here is was this a righteous lie no I don't think it was. I mean, first off, again, we don't really see any validation that they would actually kill him because of his wife. Now, maybe that is a cultural thing at this time in ancient Egypt, but I don't really see that being the case. So really, I think it's just fear. I think Abram is just fearful for what might happen to him, might happen to him. And so because of that, he comes up with this scheme, uh, this lie, and he's blessed by it. And I, I think, so the question is, that pops into my mind, is God, is God basically blessing him because of the lie? No. I, the Lord is blessing him because uh, he has called Abram to be his representative. Now, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that he will just get off scot free uh, because of what he's doing. Because what's interesting is this same exact story happens uh, not just with Abram but with Isaac, his son. And so I think that's really interesting that the father passes down the scheme to his son, not willingly and probably not even directly, but he just does it. And it's possible that Isaac may have heard uh, his father Abraham tell him about this time that he and his mom was in Egypt. And maybe he remembered that and did that because of that. Uh, and if that's so, then that's, bad parenting and that's a consequence for in this sin um yes he is blessed in this moment by all these things but it it shows up a little bit of, of a consequence later on and i think too it also shows up a little bit of a consequence when um between hagar and uh and sarai later on which we'll get into later on um but yeah verse 17 but the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. So it's not the fact that the plagues don't come about because of... Um, because of the fact that Pharaoh was hospitable. No, he is courting Abram's wife to become his wife. <laughs> and that is where God says, ah, that, no, no, no. So first off, this shows the value of marriage. Uh, this shows that God always 
um, had in mind for uh, the husband to value uh, his his wife and and the wife to value uh, her husband and it's just not happening here and because of that it causes this great kind of chaos in Egypt for a little for a little bit in Pharaoh's house where there's these great plagues. Uh, and it says because of Sarah, Abram's wife, and which is true, that's the sort, that's, that's why it's happening uh, because of Sarah being Abram's wife. And so it's basically adultery, right? Um, but it's interesting that when Pharaoh calls Abram, he doesn't say to him, why is it that your wife has done this to me? No, he knows exactly who's at fault here, and it is Abram. He says, what, what is this you have done to me? Uh, why did you not tell me that she was your wife? And it could be that Sarai tells, um, Sarai tells Pharaoh that Abram is actually her husband, and that's why these plagues are happening. But it could be, too, that the Lord tells Pharaoh that this is why the plagues are happening, um, which I found always interesting. How does he know uh, that she is Abram's wife? Um, but, I, but obviously he says, uh, why did you do this? And so he's... He then says, look, just go, get out. Uh, and Pharaoh gave, verse 20, and Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. He could have easily just killed Abram on the spot for what he did, uh, but he doesn't. He does let him leave. Uh, it's basically kind of has some exile vibes to it, uh, but he uh, he lets him leave, not only with just he and his, uh, not just Abram and his wife, Sarai, uh, but everything that they had. Um, but the consequence is, not only do you have this rift between Pharaoh and Abram that causes that, um, but this adultery uh, causes plagues to fall upon innocent people uh, within the house of Pharaoh. And it's solely because of the lie of Abram. It's not Pharaoh's fault. Pharaoh thought that Sarai was Abram's sister. And so it is solely on Abram. And so even though the consequences um, aren't directly on Abram right at that moment. There are consequences that he has to watch as he leaves the house. You can imagine him looking at people that have boils or that um, that have sicknesses or have lost livestock or anything, any other plagues that we see in the book of Exodus, let's say. Um, but he has to watch the consequences of his sin as he's leaving. Uh, that must have been a humiliating moment uh, for Abram. And also, what is his wife thinking about him too, right? Um, but it is definitely a kink in Abram's faithful on, uh, armor that looks so good in the first part, but then takes this downward spiral so soon after. And I think... It's good to see this, though, from Abram because it's a constant reminder to you and I as believers to always be alert. Always be alert to the situations that we are in, to the things that we say, uh, to the things that we think about as well, right? Um, and I think that's really kind of the point of this passage is be alert, for our sin is always around the corner. Doesn't mean that Abram is no longer uh, a child of God. Doesn't mean that God gives up on Abram. But he has to deal with the consequences of his sin that sadly affect other people that weren't even part of it uh, necessarily. Um, so that is something that is really, really stands out here um, about Abram. Now, Based on this, chapter 13, which is where we'll we'll head next week, is um, where Abram 
gets to see where the Lord is actually sending him. Uh, so it's cool to see the grace of God um, on the back of such a stupid moment <laughs> by Abram. So we'll look into that next week. However, I'll see you with the Bratton Word tomorrow as well. Thanks.